our very own president-elect and his wife. We have our vice president in the hall as well. But please, let's get seated. The program is starting now. We cannot be exchanging pleasantries when Mr. President is seated. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. The President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, and Commander-in-Chief, His Excellency, our own Baba, Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, The Vice President, His Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, GCON. The President-elect, our very own Ashiwaju, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and his amiable wife, Vice President elect Kashim Shetima, and his delectable wife, President of the Senate, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Hamed Lawan, GCON, Right Honorable Speaker. Federal House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, CFR, Chief Justice of Nigeria, Your Lordship, Olukayode Ariwala, GCON, our indefatigable Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Chairman Presidential Transition Council, Boss Mustafa, CFR, my dear sister, Head of Service of the Federation, Dr. Folashade Yemi Esson, CFR, Chairman of the Governing Party, APC, Abdullahi Adamu, C-O-N, distinguished members of the National Assembly here present, distinguished state governors from all over Nigeria here present, distinguished members of the judiciary here with us, members of the National Executive Council, and of special mention are our honorable ministers that have been working assiduously together with the SGF to ensure a beautiful and smooth transition process. Members of the diplomatic corps, we wouldn't forget you. You're an integral part of our corporate entity. Captains and barons of industry here present distinguished politicians here present today, members of my professional circle, fourth estate of the realm, without you, the entire world, we don't know what is happening in Nigeria today. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to this epoch-making event, which I choose to call an August occasion in the month of May. And in a few minutes, I will introduce my co MC to you. But my name still remains Omotayo, Omotosho, member Federal Republic. I'm a media entrepreneur, a television broadcaster, and a culture and tourism 
professional. I'm here with my media colleague, who has been working assiduously as well to ensure that this event comes to a reality, special advisor to our president on media, Femi Additional. Femi, you want to say welcome to our people. Your Excellency, Mr. President, all of your protocols observed, I'd like to say good morning to everyone here. Thank you. Without much ado, today we are witnessing a very, very spectacular history in the political trajectory of Mother Nigeria. Indeed, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Where would we have been without the mercy of God Almighty as a people? What would have happened to us as a nation if not for the love of God Almighty on you and I? A lot of people thought today would not come to reality. Some people have even said that Nigeria would decent and great years before now, that we will break. But God Almighty must have been smiling on us from heaven above to say, these are my people, and I would ensure that they do not break. And so today we have lots and lots of reasons to thank him for making dream come to reality. We're here today looking so colorful, looking so beautiful, looking so scintillating. I think we should clap for ourselves. Let us clap for ourselves. We are all adorned with beautiful African fabrics promoting the beauty of Nigeria to the outside world. You can check out our Mr. President, check out our First Lady, check out even the President-elect with a signature cap and his delectable wife. I can go on and on and on. Our Vice President also promotes the image of this country. And so, we thank God for today. Without him, we wouldn't be here. So without much ado, knowing too well that we are all a bunch of grateful Let's go to the first item of the program today. And I'll be calling on the gentleman that set up the transition Council, and I've been working assiduously day in, day out to ensure a seamless and smooth set of programs, not just one program. We were all still here yesterday till about 11 p.m., 12 midnight, with the head of service and other members of the council, with Mr. Olusha Gwadekule from APS, the Minister of Special Duties, quite a lot of us were here, ensuring that we welcome you the way we showed, ensuring an each free transition process. And so it takes a great pleasure from my own end to call on the gentleman that wears the cap of taking responsibility for a smooth transition. Our very own secretary to the government of the Federation. Before I call him to come up to deliver the welcome address, my co-MC just hinted me now that while we started, our first lady walked in. I knew when I was introducing Mr. President, I didn't see her there, I wanted to recognize her, but I couldn't do that in absentia. Now that she's coming, you're very much welcome, our First Lady. God bless you for coming.
if you want to clap, please clap. <laughs> I heard some claps on that side. Please clap. Now I would like to call on our own SGF Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, CFR, to give us his welcome address. He's also the Chairman, Presidential Transition Council. You're welcome, sir. Point of correction, please. Uh, I, I still love to hold my job for the next three days. <laughs> I, I, I did not, cause I did not form the transition, presidential transition council. Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari formed it, and also delegated me with the responsibility to chair it, and inaugurated. A point of correction. I love my job, and I've enjoyed it. And I want to enjoy it for the next three days. Your Excellency, Mr. President, President Mohammed Buhari, Your Excellency, the First Lady, Your Excellency, the Vice President, Your Excellency, the President elect, and your adorable wife. Your Excellency, the Vice President-elect, and your amiable wife, the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, with your darling wife, members of the Federal Executive Council here present, the National Chairman of the APC, our governors from the different states, family of the president-elect and the vice president-elect, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press. On behalf of the entire members of the Presidential Transition Council, I wish to welcome His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari and the vice president, Professor Yemi Osibajo, your Excellencies, the governors of the different states here present, the President of the Senate, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. This is the first in the series of events lined up for the inauguration that we will have in attendance. His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinibu. The second event will be the Hanover of transition documents to the president-elect. I will keep the third event to my chest so we don't lose the element of surprise that comes with the innovative addition to the ceremony. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my role at this time is to welcome you, and I would like to keep it simple as I will be returning to give a detailed presentation that will outline the objectives of this gathering. Once again, welcome. Thank you, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I will now invite the Honorable Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Distinguished Senator George Akume, to perform the first leg of this ceremony. Thank you. His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, 
President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbanjo, DCON. Your Excellency the First Lady, the President-elect, His Excellency Senator Bola Tinumu, accompanied by his dear wife, Senator Remy Tinumbu, the Vice President-elect, His Excellency Kashim Shetima, and his dear wife, President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, my Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, the Chairman of our great party, the All Progressives Congress, Baje Damu, members of the National Assembly, our governors, members of the Executive Council of Nigeria, Secretary to the Government, Chief of Staff Honorable, the National Security members of the diplomatic or captains of industry, senior party leaders here present, ladies and gentlemen. It is with utmost humility that I address this August gathering on the conferment of the national honors of the Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on Senator Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, President-elect, and as Shiwaji of Lagos, and the Grand Commander of the Order of the, Ni of the Niger, GCON, on Senator Kashim Shetima, the Vice President-elect, respectively. Today, as is customary, the President will have the privilege of bestowing the highest national honors of our land upon these extraordinary Nigerians who have shown unwavering dedication remarkable leadership and selfless service to our nation. Your Excellency, you may recall that on June 12, 2018, in a deliberate attempt to heal the land and enthrone justice, you conferred these distinguished awards on His Excellency, late Chief M. K. Y. Biola, GCFR, winner of the 1999 presidential election and his vice, his Excellency Ambassador Baba Gana Kingibe, GCON, Lord Chief Gane Fayomi, was also honored at the ceremony with GCON in recognition of his fight for human rights, particularly the rights of the common man. However, today's event is different. Why the Abiola Kingibe election of June 12 was annulled? This election has been upheld and adjudged one of the freest and the most credible in the political history of our country. The verdict of history, therefore, <laughs> the verdict of history, therefore, will be kind and generous to you, Mr. President, for your commitment to the sanctity of the democratic process and love our country. Let me use this opportunity to extend my heartfelt congratulations to the President-elect, Bola Tinubu, and the Vice President-elect, Senator Kashim Shetima, on their forthcoming inauguration to President as Vice President of our great nation. Your Excellency's steadfastness, commitment, and wavering vision, and vigorous efforts toward the progress and development of our dear country has earned you the people's confidence to lead Nigeria in the next dispensation. His Excellency Bola Metinumba and His Excellency Kashim Shetima are transformational and patriotic leaders. For eight years of his stewardship of Lagos State, Shehuwaju transformed the state in a most unprecedented way. And today, the Lagos economy is rated as number six in Africa. He is also a political strategist. When his party, Alliance for Democracy, AD, was hit below the belt 
in 2003, he along with his associate planned and effected total deconstruction of the PDP in the Southwest. It is credit to Senator Shetima that he fought the dreaded Boko Haram to a standstill and still continued with massive development of Bono states as governor. Given the track records of the two patriotic and hardworking Nigerians, the two citizens, Nigerians massively voted for them on the 25th of February, 2023, as president and vice president, respectively. As we suffer the euphoria of this ceremony, let us remember that the recipients are considered as beacons of hope and aspiration for our nation. Their exemplary leadership and unwavering dedication to the betterment of our society serve as a reminder to a united Nigeria where all citizens can thrive without bounds. In conclusion, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. President, His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, for his remarkable achievements in the development of our nation. Your Excellency has been a privilege to serve under your government. I am confident, as many Nigerians are, that the incoming administration will continue to build on the legacy that has been laid and take our nation to even greater heights. Thank you and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Excellency and Minister George Akume. Mr. President, distinguished and eminent Nigerians, this is a two-pronged event. One is the investiture part, and the second is the transfer of button of service. We are going into the first part now, which is the investiture confirmment of the national honor of Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCOA, on His Excellency Kashim Shetima, Vice President elect. Can you step forward, please? Born September 2, 1966, in Maiduguri, into the illustrious family of Alaji Shetima Mustafa Kutaibe. The Shetima Kaoma Moroma of Borno and Hajiana Nakujarima Shetima, a princess of the esteemed Elkenemi royal family, His Excellency Senator Kashim Shetima is famously known for his courage as a performing wartime governor. Shetima attended La Misula Primary School in Maiduguri from 1972 to 1978. Government Community Secondary School View from 1978 to 1980 and Government Science Secondary School Potescum from 1980 to 1983. Shetima obtained his B.Sc. with honors in Agricultural Economics from the University of Maybury in 1981 and his M.Sc. in Agricultural Economics from the University of Ibadan in 1991 after his NYSc in Calabar. Shetima worked as a University of Maiduguri lecturer before he moved into the banking sector where he rapidly rose to become a general manager. In 2007, Shetima was appointed by Borno State Governor Ali Modi Sharif as Commissioner of Finance and Economic Development. Shetima later served in the Ministries of Education, Agriculture, Health as well as Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs. In 2011, Shetima was elected governor of Borno State and re-elected in 2015. As governor, Kashim Shetima formalized, funded, trained and equipped thousands of Borno youths under the name Civilian JTF, who voluntarily supported the military in fighting Boko Haram. Shetima also prioritized Borno's infrastructural development and the reconstruction of communities displaced by Boko Haram. To revolutionize education and promote peace in Borno, Shetima introduced the mega-sized school system, targeting orphans from insurgent... Thank academy. you. Thank you.
Congratulations, His Excellency, the Vice President elect Kashim Shetima, GCON. Thank you. For those manning the equipment where the trans, uh, citation is being read, the procedure now will be you read the citation first or you play the citation first and then the person who is being invested with the title will come forward. So, shall we take the citation of President-elect His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Citation please. Since the return of civilian rule in 1999, Bola Ahmed Tinubu's fidelity in maintaining his political party as a formidable opposition helped salvage multi-party democracy in Nigeria. Rising through the political murky waters in the 1990s, he propelled his way with the progressives platform of a social democratic party which evolved out of Shehu Musayaradua's People's Front political machine to become the strongman of Lagos politics, winning a senatorial election for Lagos Central Senatorial District in 1992. Bola Ahmed Tinubu never looked back after then. He went ahead to win the governorship election in Lagos State in 1999 under the flag of the Alliance for Democracy Party. The virtues of courage, determination, commitment, vision, focus and strong sense of purpose that have characterized Ashua Jubola Ahmed Tinubu's politics drove his emergence as one of the country's most successful governors. His stewardship of Lagos State for eight years remains a reference point for good governance in Nigeria and across the region, creating the blueprint for Nigeria's richest state and fifth largest economy in Africa. Ashura Jutunobu, along with a few other progressives, cobbled together the APC, which in 2015 unseated a sitting president at the center for the first time in Nigeria's political history. That elected government, led by President Muhammad Buhari, was re-elected in 2019 based on its superlative performance and Tinubu's political sagacity. He overwhelmingly won his party's primary election in Abuja on June 8 last year at Eagle Square in a most transparent and well-organized election. As a party's presidential candidate who traversed the length and breadth of the country, campaigning for votes with his manifesto, which he christened, renewed hope, agenda for better Nigeria, wherein he promised far-reaching ideas and solutions to make life better for the people. Born on the 29th of March 1952, young Bola left the shores of Nigeria for the United States after primary and secondary school education and first attended Richard Daly College in Chicago and then Chicago State University graduating in 1979 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Accountancy. Tinubu got employment in the United States with such companies as Deloitte and GTE Services Corporation. He returned to Nigeria in 1983 and joined ExxonMobil as a company executive. After an illustrious career in the private sector, he ventured into Nigeria's political terrain and has evolved into a political master strategist and a mentor of multitude of men. At Bolo Ahmed Tinubu's 71st birthday on March 29, 2023, President Muhammad Buhari was quoted in his congratulatory message by Femi Adishina, his special advisor on media and publicity, as saying, and I quote, 
I believe Ashuraju's warmth, friendliness, and generosity has set the pace for a network of friends, home and abroad, that will shape his presidency with requisite expertise to guide their economy and consolidate on the investments of past leaders, particularly in the people's first development and infrastructure, unquote. President Buhari. Today, he prepares to assume office as President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, more than 30 years since he entered politics for the common good, during which he helped shape the political careers of many. What more can one say about an incoming 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria but to hail our man of the moment? Our leader, our mentor, our fisher of men, our discoverer of talents and our indefatigable master strategists. Let us hail the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Bola Ahmed And the president elect please step forward while Mr. President will perform the confirmant of the national honor of Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, GCFR. Congratulations, <laughs> President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR. From today, we wouldn't be addressing President-elect, as His Excellency Bola Tinubu alone, it will not be complete, except you put His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR. <laughs> Another round of applause, the same for our Vice President-elect. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's a beautiful day. Going next to the item we have on the program to show the import of why we included this in the program is because some people still don't know how much the creative arts, culture and tourism should be contributing to a nation's national growth. Some do know, some don't. And so we decided that to bring it to perspective, we should include this. The contributions of culture, tourism, and the creative arts to a nation's economy cannot be overemphasized. Mention our rich cultural heritage, our songs, our dances, our rhythms, our rhymes, our cultural festivals, our poetry, folklore, read political history, our museums, monuments, art galleries, Nollywood films, 
that are making us proud and miss committee of nations, our rich dabbers, rich traditions. No wonder we have our own fathers here, our traditional rulers, and they came in good time to be here today. Mention it. We are blessed as a nation. Mr. President took it to a high level. Our new incoming president is determined to take it to another higher level. In anticipation of that, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Spoken words is an integral part of the culture, tourism, and creative arts industry all over the world. That explains why our own daughter will be coming out in a few seconds to give her own presentation. Keyon Oyeka is an award-winning spoken word artist whose goal is to influence change at personal, national, and global levels. She has performed at high-level events organized by international organizations like USAID, UKAID, and the Commonwealth. She believes in a Nigeria where leaders and critics and citizens work collectively for its development and communicated this in a poem, No See Don't Look. No more Sidon look for those that are Sidoni to say it in the pidgin language. That's the title of the spoken word for today. And this featured on BBC Media Action, making Nigeria proud, a Miss Committee of Nations. Please let's give a round of applause as I call on Keon Oyeka. Keon? Please step forward and let's see you do what you know how to do best. Bless you. Another round of applause. Thank you. That would encourage her. Arise, O compatriot. Nigeria calls you. Not your tribe, religion, or political affiliation. But this land of tens of millions calls you to guide her to light. In this call is the voice of a ten-year-old. Diagnosed with a disease that she has no name for and a cost bigger than her age. She calls you. Will you answer? Arise, O compatriots! Nigeria calls you. In this call is the voice of a man, powerful but crippled by unemployment. See him in traffic, hawking, racing after cars that keeps outrunning him. He calls you. Will you answer? Arise, O oh compatriot. Nigeria calls you. In this call is the voice of a native clutching his ancestors in his chest, questions staggering in his chest whether to japa or to stay. Will you answer? Arise, O oh compatriot. Nigeria calls you. In this call, is the voice of a woman terrified every time her son walks out the door wondering whether he will come back a walking body or in a body bag he calls you will you answer we are the answer to our own prayers we are the prophet we are the prophecy we are nigerians a coming together of a people who their blood to their hearts a conglomerate of men and women who do not go to bed until the sun does resilience tattooed on our skin not west not east not central southeast south south southwest 
every tribe, every tongue coming together into one. For we are better together. Arise, O oh compatriots, in every place where we fought each other, we drop our arms and stretch out our arms to hold each other. That the labor of our heroes will not stay rotting on history books, but become the foundation for us to build tomorrow together. That no seat, no table is set without everyone sitting on it that every time we build ourselves together we're coming together and echoing that we are better together do they know who we are do they know who we are our ancestors bullied fear into hiding we are from an ancient civilization named after god our artists make music like water oh see them bristling ah oh, you can't resist it our innovators make the wind in their palms our sons and daughters are gold medalists world record breakers scientists artists Nobel prize winners and frontliners we may be broken but there is no nation so beautiful so tirelessly putting itself together what a nation what a people what an existence as we unfold another administration May promises become flesh and not fold into pockets or turn into ghosts. May our democracy be a voice where the voice that raises a placard or drags a hashtag meets with a voice in power willing to listen, willing to negotiate. Arise, O oh compatriots, we are Nigerians. We invent our own son and do not wait for the light at the end. If this is a game, we will win this. So we call our government to be accountable. We call our leaders to be selfless. We call our tribes to be one. We call our languages to be borderless, coaches, relentless. Passing the battle, everyone racing towards a renewed hope for a better Nigeria. Nigeria, they carry last. Nobody feel blow whistle until we win. It may take a while, but we will get there. And when we do, it go loud. And the world will stand still as we show them how to make a world out of nothing when a people stand together as one. Arise, O oh compatriots. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Excellency, Mr. President, and the First Lady, Your Excellency, the Vice President, Your Excellency, the President-elect, and your dear wife, Your Excellency, the Vice President-elect, and your dear wife, President of the Senate, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and your dear wife, Governors here present, members of the Federal Executive Council here present, the National Chairman of the APC, please permit me to stand on already established and existing protocol. 
This is the second arm of today's event. And it's quite elaborate. Today we gather here to commemorate a remarkable milestone in the history of our great nation. For 2,916 days, President Muhammad Buhari has led our beloved country from the forefront as the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. These eight years have been a testament of our unwavering determination and resilience in the face of challenges. As I stand before you, I do so with immense pride and honor, having served as the Secretary to the Government of the Federation for five and years and six months. This pivotal role has granted me the privilege of being at the heart of policy coordination and implementation, witnessing firsthand the remarkable strides of our administration. Under the visionary leadership of President Muhammad Buhari, Nigeria has forged ahead, pushing the boundaries of its development. We have faced adversities head on and transformed them into opportunities for growth and progress. Our nation has risen above the odds propelled by the collective will and dedication of its people. From the bustling markets of Lagos to the tranquil plains of Kano, the impact of our governance trajectory has been felt across every nook and corner of our great land. We have unleashed the transformative power of our economy fostering an environment that promotes entrepreneurship and empowers our citizens. Our investments in critical infrastructure have paved the way for seamless connectivity and unleash the potential of our diverse regions. But it was not always like that. When President Muhammadu Buhari assumed office, the Nigerian economy which had experienced over a decade of remarkable growth, was struck by a debilitating blow. The rapid and relentless decline in crude oil prices, starting in mid-2014, coupled with the failure to diversify our revenue and foreign exchange sources, thrust our nation into a recession by the second quarter of 2016. In the face of this monumental adversity, the Buhari administration rose to the occasion, employing a multifaceted approach to confront these challenges head on and chart a new course for our national economy. The three fundamental pillars were identified as the bedrock of our strategy, eradicating corruption, enhancing security, and revitalizing the economy. With unwavering determination, we embarked on an extraordinary journey of transformation. The initial step was the implementation of the strategic implementation plan, a bold and decisive move to address the immediate needs of our nation during this time of economic uncertainty. The SIP, crafted as a short-term intervention, served as a guiding light, illuminating the path toward a brighter future. But we do not stop there. Recognizing the long-term prosperity required a comprehensive and a visionary plan, we unveil the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, ERGP. This medium-term blueprint, spanning from 2017 to 2020, harness the boundless ingenuity and indomitability spirit of the Nigerian people, the priceless assets that propelled our nation's pro progress. 
The ERGP became our compass, steering us towards economic resurgence and sustainable growth. It laid the groundwork for diversification, encouraging innovation, entrepreneurship, and investment across various sectors. As we stand here today, Your Excellency, reflecting on the remarkable journey of the Buhari administration, we cannot overlook the pivotal moment when the second term commenced in 2019. With a visionary approach, this administration charted a new course, injecting fresh vigor and strategic foresight into the heart of our nation's development. Recognizing the need for introspection and refinement, a policy programs and project audit committee under the leadership of the Vice President was established to meticulously attest, I mean, assess the administration's performance during the first term. This comprehensive review served as the catalyst for defining the key areas of focus for the next four years, setting the stage for an era of unparalleled progress. In August 2019, fueled by the findings of this committee, the administration made an unwavering commitment to nine priorities that encapsulated our collective aspirations and underpin our pursuit of good governance. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to inform you all that within the framework of the nine priority areas of this administration, we have made considerable efforts to address development gaps that the administration made on assumption. In recognition of the importance of, the critical, uh, of critical infrastructure in economic development, the quest of this administration to bequest a lasting legacy we have implemented high-impact projects across the length and breadth of the country that meet the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians. Some of the notable achievements include the completion of the 326 kilometers of rail line and 12 station buildings for Itape Ajakuta Wari Rail Line, the railway ancillary facilities, completion of one 156.5 kilometer Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rail modernization project with 6.5 kilometers extension to Lagos Port, Apapa, and 10 station buildings. Development of 387 kilometers Kano Katsina Jibi Amaradi in Niger with a branch line from Kano to Dute and 20 station buildings. Rehabilitation a reconstruction of 300 units of houses at the railway village in Abo in Delta State. On road projects, this administration has constructed 408 kilometers of bridges, roads, 2,575 kilometers of Sukuk roads, and maintenance of 16,497 kilometers of roads across the country through the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. Key among these projects are the construction of 1.9 kilometer now named Muhammad Buhari Bridge, linking Anambra and Delta States. With a 10.30 kilometer approach road, rehabilitation, construction and expansion of Lagos Shagamu Ibadan dual carriageway which is at 57.64% completion. The ongoing rehabilitation of Abuja Kaduna Zaria Canal Road, construction of Ecom Bridge, uh, which is part of the project that Mr. President uh, commissioned two days ago, construction of local Oweto Bridge in Benue and other states, amongst others. In addition, the federal government has embarked on the reconstruction of 44 federal roads with a total length of 4,554 kilometers and of the 11 new roads totaling 732 kilometers recently approved
by the Federal Executive Council. Under the Road Infrastructure Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit. These projects, which are being funded by the Nigerian National Petroleum Limited, are similar to the existing collaborations between, with Mrs. Dangote Industries, Bua Group, to improve the stock of our road infrastructure under the tax credit scheme. On the economy, Your Excellencies, Nigeria's gross domestic product, GDP, grew by 3.52% year-on-year in real terms in the fourth quarter of 2022, following growth of 2.25 in the third quarter of 2022, and a 3.98% in the fourth quarter of 2021. With this, Nigeria has witnessed nine consecutive growth quarters of growth after negative rates recorded in the second and third quarters of 2020. The growth rate represents a sustained positive economic performance, especially for the non-oil sector, which contributed 95.66% to the nation's GDP in the fourth quarter of 2022, higher than the share recorded in the fourth quarter of 2021, which was 94.81%, and higher than the third quarter of 2022, recorded as 94.34%. Moreover, on aggregate, 94.33% was con contributed in 2022, higher than 92.76% reported in 2021. The power sector, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, has remained a critical priority for the administration. The implementation of a willing buyer and willing seller policy introduced by this administration has opened up opportunities for increased delivery of electricity to undeserved homes and industries. We are also executing a number of critical projects through the Transmission Rehabilitation and Expansion Program which will result in achieving the national goal of improved power supply by 2020. To achieve this laudable objective, the following projects are being implemented to increase generation capacity. Zungero Power Plant, which is almost completed, uh, and also Katsina wind, wind Farm Project at 97% of completion. Furthermore, to boost transmission and distribution, the 57.7 kilometer, 132 kVA DC line from Yandev to Apio, and 65.99 kilometer, 33 kV single cycle line to Kashambila village are at the advanced stage of completion. This is expected to add 40 megawatts to the national grid. The first phase of the engineering or energizing education program implemented in several states is ongoing. The second phase, which is specifically focused at education and health institutions, has commenced in institutions benefiting from it. This administration achieved 100% completion of six projects under the Energizing Economies Program in five states, including Lagos, which has two projects, Abia, Kano, Ogun, and Ondo states. It is important to state at this junction the partnership of the federal government and Siemens AG through the Presidential Power Initiative to increase electricity generation to 25,000 megawatts in six years that it is on course, that has started and it is continuing. The introduction of the insurance arm of the basic health care fund and the signing of the mandatory health insurance act by the president has resulted in the registration of over 16 million persons. It is gratifying to note that 7,650 primary health facilities have been accredited and equipped by the Primary Health Care Development Agency. In the education sector, we have made remarkable progress, and this can be seen from the records of school, uh, uh, school uh, 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 turnout and enrollments. In the digital economy, which is gradually becoming the lifeline of every economy, the government recorded an increase in broadband coverage across the country 
from 33.7% in 2019 to 100% coverage in 2022. This was achieved through the develop, de deployment of Starlink internet services across the country, which has helped bridge the existing internet connectivity gap across rural communities in Nigeria, where other network operators could not deploy their services. I must at this point acknowledge the states that made this great feat possible by enforcing the 145 linear meter right of way charge. The multiplier effort or effect on the economy is unimaginable. 4G penetration across the country has also increased from 23% in 2019 to 80.86% as at quarter 4, 2022. And yet again, this has, attributed, has been attributed to the increase in the number of users of G4 technology in most states in the country. Undoubtedly, we really can't go very far without each other. As a credit of this investment, the agriculture sector has also experienced phenomenal growth. Today, at the click of a, in the bid to strengthen the culture of performance management and sustain the enormous gains achieved, this government issued Executive Order Number 13 of 2022 to institutionalize the Central Delivery Coordinating Unit with the sole aim of tracking and supporting the implementation of presidential priorities, programs, and projects. The activation of the delivery unit has created a heightened culture of transparency and accountability in the entire system of government, ensuring razor-sharp focus on the delivery of agreed priorities, which has led to effective delivery of services that our citizens most rightly deserve. Today, at the click of a button, you can access government programs, policies, and projects with their course on the internet. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, it is important to provide some context to the handover documents that President Muhammad Buhari will be presenting to the President-elect, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR today. The Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, with the support of our technical partners, via a presidential directive, set up the delivery unit to enable the tracking of ministerial deliverables and the nine priority area. This were then signed onto. Three documents will be presented to the president elect this morning. The first is a briefing note on each of the nine priority areas covering all sectors. The briefs are intended to provide relevant information that would help the new administration understand the peculiarities of each sector, including key issues within the sector that need immediate attention, highlights of quick wins, a mapping of the efforts of the Buhari administration in the areas where it finds alignment with the renewed hope agenda of the incoming administration. The novelty about this, Your Excellency, Mr. President and the President-elect, is that we took the renewed hope agenda and aligned it with the nine priority areas. And where there are gaps, we indicated the gaps and where there are improvements based on the renewed hope agenda, we indicated it and we stated what are the quick wins, what can be deferred for the future. So this is a comprehensive document you are receiving this afternoon. It's a combination of the effort of the President Muhammad Buhari administration aligned with your vision for Nigeria. The briefs also provide key recommendations on how to improve sector outcomes. The second document you will be receiving, Your Excellency, this afternoon is a compendium 
which comprehensively captures the priority programs and projects implemented by the Buhari administration towards achieving the nine priority areas. It displays a trend of analysis of annual budget performances from 2019. Every year, what is the budget performance? 80 percent? 100 percent? 50 percent? As achieved through the mandate of the nine priority areas. Each ministry is catalogued into that. And a summary of the ministerial performance and scorecard for each ministry is detailed in this document. You take, for instance, Ministry of Education. What is the impact of that ministry on the citizens? If the mandate says they are going to increase enrollment with 2 million, what percentage of that 2 million have been achieved? And if it has not been fully achieved, what are the impediments? What were the constraints? Was it as a result of funding? Was it as a result of conflicting administration of that particular mandate? And what are the expected outcomes and the way out? So that is provided in this particular document. Policies and projects implemented throughout the period. It contains up-to-date information on what the outgoing government has accomplished, what is yet to be achieved, major challenges and the advisories for the future. The third document you are receiving this afternoon, Your Excellency, is policy status update. In a bid to preserve institutional memory and support the efforts of the incoming administration. The policies implemented by all the ministries, extra ministerial departments and agencies under the Buhari administration has been carefully compiled and organized to show the period each was developed, the key objectives of that policy, the status of implementation, the key achievements, and what remains to be done. So these are the three documents that are contained in the white box which Mr. President will be handing over to you this afternoon. These documents represent years of hard work, strategic planning and implementation. They provide a comprehensive overview of the administration's achievements, ongoing projects and priorities for the future. With the foundation laid by the President Mohammed Buhari administration, President-elect His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tidubu GCFR has a solid platform to build upon and continue the journey towards a prosperous and thriving Nigeria. We hope the incoming administration will find these documents useful and utilize them as a basis for defining its policy direction. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is now my singular honor. Yes, it's all good with all that. All everything together. So the next thing we are doing is to invite the president. The transition documents are going to be handed over to the president elect now by President Muhammad Buhari. Then you have the pattern of service, 
which President Buhari will also hand over to the President-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu GCFI. You know that in a relay race, buttons are handed over. It shows you that governance and government is a long distance race. Now, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let's please have our seats. And please, let's cut the noise that is coming from the back of the hall. This is a high-level event and such kind of noise is not expected or appreciated. Please, let's control the noise coming from the back of the hall. The President-elect is going to break his speech shortly after the podium is set up. I hope you can recall that in 2015, at about this time, the noise in the country then was that there were no form of transition documents. No notes, no reports, nothing. But you can see the difference today. The President has signed Executive Order 14, which mandated the Transition Council to prepare all that we have seen now. And it's going to be a culture in the country because it's already a law. You won't have any other government succeeding another government and there are no records at all because Executive Order 14 has mandated that every government does this before a new government comes in. Thank you. I think we should give a round of applause. Thank you. My pleasure to call on the President-elect, His Excellency, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to make his response. You're welcome, sir. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Muhammadu Buhari and his wife, Our Excellency, Ajia Aisha Buhari. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibai. My wife, Olura Mijinubu. Thank you. Never miss a moment. Instant breaking news from all over the globe. Live streaming of your favorite programs delivered directly to you. Watch anytime from anywhere on your mobile or smart devices. Say thank you, Mr. President. I can only call you, 
Mr. Democrat. He has bestowed the nation's highest honor on my first president, elect Shechimami. Our deep thanks also for the transition documents, which clearly enumerated the effort of the past eight years and year. The document summarizes the main work of your administration. They constitute an impressive and noteworthy scorecard. You have made history, and no one can deny your contribution to our national development. Your devotion to progressive and democratic governance is as available. I stand here today renewed in hope and dedication to our national greatness. I also feel full of pride that this moment is our moment and I know what it represents. This stately occasion is proof that Nigeria is vibrant and true democracy. It confirms that our democratic path is right and is right, and nothing will deter us from sticking to it. Uh, sure. Our way shall not be always smooth, yes. It's democracy is rough and tumble, hills and valleys. Yet we are imbued with faith in our purpose and belief in our collective ability to overcome the challenges that confront us. President Boy. You have shown courage and taken tall decisions. Others avoided. On such decision is to recognize the injust injustice of an moment of 1993 election to designate June 12th as a democracy day and to bestow the nation's highest honor on late M.K. Abiola. As, any, as much as anyone could, you reach back into history to set the record straight and heal the festering wound. Thank you. <laughs> the justice you did in this matter lent special meanings to today. The people have put their trust in us. You have done your part, Mr. President. Now, a great duty will descend on me. I understand the meaning of the honor given to me today and the magnitude of the tax that awaits. you go to the road or Niger or anywhere. 
you expect knocks on your doors. <laughs> we are determined as enumerated our security, economy, agriculture, jobs, education, health and power and in all sectors we must make headway as if shattered the course. The people deserve no less. You said so. I shall not disappoint you. Thank you. President-elect, thank you so much. Standing on existing protocols, Mr. President-elect has said it all. If you're looking for a thinker and a strategist, is Ashiwa Jubola Hamed Tinubu GCFR. He said a lot to us today and we are happy to hear him speak. He talked about the renewed hope for a better Nigeria. I summarize all that he has said today with those words, the new hope, a renewed hope for a better Nigeria. One short quotation I got from him because we're conscious of time and we need to quickly wrap this up for some other engagements. He said, and I quote, I understand the magnitude of the national honors accorded me today and the task ahead. End of quote. And when he was saying that, something reminded me of what he did in Lagos State as our governor for the tourism, culture, and the creative arts industry in Nigeria. I was director of general tourism then, and so we went to Lagos State to meet with him. And he told me and my entourage, I must promote this sector, not only for the betterment of my state, as the most cosmopolitan state in Nigeria, but for the betterment of the Nigerian nation. And so we came up with the Black Heritage Festival that became a tourism icon for Lagos State for all the years he was there and all other governors that came after him continued promoting the Black Heritage Festival and the tourism product of the state for Nigeria. I think we should give him a round of applause. It shows his depth of foresight and creativity. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming towards the tail end of this program. Just before I call on our number one citizen, Mr. President himself, I want to prepare our minds that immediately after Mr. President speaks, we wouldn't want him to go through the bother or the pain of going back to sit down again we will be taking the photographs immediately. So while he stands by the podium, those that have been enlisted to join him for the photographs will be called. We have it in the program, but we've also been given the latitude as masters of ceremony for myself and Femi Adishinov to put our heads together and include some people that must be there. Because when we're looking at the list, there were some people omitted. And I recall yesterday, the council did say, MCs, use your discretion. Don't leave anyone out. So with the list you have, we would want Senator Abdullahi Adamu, Chairman APC, to join when we get to the assignment of the photographs. Professor Ibrahim Gambari, the Chief of Staff to the President, to join. Chief B.C. Akonde, former Oshun Kovno. Chief Shegmo Shoba, 
former Ogun State Governor, and other governors here present to join. We will get to that in a few. Now to listening to the father of the nation, the gentleman that have done his best in the past eight years to evolve in a better Nigeria. Some love him for it, some hate him for it. But by God's grace today, he's still standing and standing tall. Let's give him a round of applause. He is standing by God's grace and standing tall. And what readily comes to my mind is summarizing, as I invite him, summarizing the words of the Greek philosopher, which relates to his vision and the vision of the incoming president. And the philosopher says, and I quote, I must pass this way, but once. The good I can do, let me do it now. Let me not defer it, nor neglect it, because I may or may not pass this way again. If I read the minds of our incoming president-elect, those are his words. When I read the mind of Mr. President Muhammad Buhari eight years ago, even when he featured on my television show, those were his words. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together as I call on the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our own Muhammad Buhari. Please sit down. Thank you. <coughs> Your Excellency, the Vice President, President elect and spouse, Vice President elect and spouse, the President of the Senate, Speaker of the House of Representatives. My dear wife, executive governors here present, members of the National Assembly, members of the Federal Executive Council, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Service Chiefs and Inspector General of Police, Heads of Security and Intelligence Agencies, traditional rulers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure and a deep sense of pride that I stand before you today to confer national honors on the President elect and Vice President-elect, His Excellency Kashim Shetima. This ceremony marks a significant milestone in our nation's democratic journey as we inaugurate a new administration that will lead Nigeria towards greater progress and prosperity. I extend my warmest congratulations to the President-elect and his well-deserved victory at the February 25th, 2023 presidential election. The Nigerian people have recognized your leadership qualities, political acumen, and passion to serve our great nation, and have entrusted you with the burden of governing our beloved country. I have no doubt that Nigeria will continue to thrive and achieve new heights under your leadership. You are the best candidate at the elections, and Nigerians have chosen wisely. 
I equally extend my congratulations to the Vice President-elect. You are wealth of experience in governance. You are unwavering commitment to the well-being of the Nigerian people. And you are exemplary leadership. You are in challenging times as governor of Borno State has made you a deserving candidate for this position. <clears throat> I have conf full confidence that you will serve our nation with utter most ded dedication and integrity. In accordance with the Honours Award Act 1963, laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, presents heads of state receive the honor of Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, GCFR, while the Vice Presidents are awarded the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCOM. <clears throat> Today, with authority vested in me, as President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I have conferred the national honors of GCFR on His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu and that of GCON on His Excellency Kashim Shetima, respectively. As we celebrate this auspicious occasion, let us not forget the immense responsibility that come with leadership. The challenges facing our nation are significant, and it is the duty of the President and the Vice President to address them with courage, wisdom, and compassion. We must remain committed to the principles of good governance, transparency, and accountability, as these are the foundations upon which our nation's progress and development relay. President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinibu, you have a long and illustrious track record of public service, marked by your exceptional achievements in various capacities. Your transformative leadership in Lagos State, where you left an indelible mark in the areas of infrastructure, education, health care, and economic development speak volumes about your dedication to the welfare of the Nigerian people. Your commitment to fostering unity, irrespective of ethnic or religious differences, is a testament to your statesmanship and visionary leadership. This administration from inception has faced security challenges such as insurgency, oil theft, kidnapping, as well as corruption, which has eaten deep into the system. With political will and support of many Nigerians, especially our budget armed forces, insurgency, terrorism, and kidnapping have been reduced to their barest minimum while corruption has been, has been tackled headlong. Despite the aforementioned challenges, our administration has made economic gains over the years. While acknowledging the turbulent times and global economic meltdown occasioned by world oil crisis, and most recently, the COVID-19 pandemic, our economy has remained afloat and strong. <clears throat> our administration commitment and determination in infrastructural upliftment of Nigeria have remained unshaken. The second Niger Bridge has been completed and commissioned. I am happy to say that no administration in Nigeria 
in Nigeria's modern history has given so much attention to roads like we have done in the last eight years. In all, we have been able to construct and complete over 8,352.94 kilometers of roads across Nigeria. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, in spite of the shortfall in the federal government's revenue due to weakness in the global economy that has led to drop in oil revenue, we have touched on all sectors of the Nigerian economy positively. As we celebrate the monumental infrastructural strides achieved by this administration, it is pertinent to acknowledge that these transformative endeavors have not only reshaped our physical landscape, but have also paved the way for remarkable economic outcomes that reverberate across our nation. The link between infrastructure and economic prosperity is undeniable. It is through the construction of roads, railways, bridges, and the other critical assets that we unlock the true potential of our nation, leading to better communication, facilitating trade, and propelling economic growth. To avoid a repeat of our 2015 experience, I signed exact order number 14 of 2023, which establishes the legal framework for conducting presidential transitions at the federal level. The executive order establishes the Presidential Transition Council chaired by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Ministerial Transitional Teams headed by the permanent secretaries. The primary responsibility of these two ad hoc bodies is to ensure that every piece of information that will help a new administration get off to a speedy start is made available in a usable format and in a timely manner. Today, I am, I am proud to have handed over to you, my successor, Your Excellency, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, three, three key documents that will guide you as you aim to define a path for your administration. It is my honest desire that you will find these documents useful, as this would be the first time in the history of this country that such a detailed documentation will be produced for handover to a new administration. I strongly encourage you to uphold this legacy and make experience even better for your successor by the time you, you are to leave office. It may also interest you to know that apart from these three documents, all the ministries and their agencies have also prepared their handover notes, ready to brief their new political leadership. I want to sincerely thank the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and his team for this great feat. We just witnessed the transfer of a button of service from me to President-elect Paula Ahmed Dinubu as part of a symbolic handover for him to continue with the race of advancing our democracy and development. <clears throat> this is a first in the history of our nation's transition process. To preserve this remarkable history for generations to come, 
I have directed that the baton be preserved in the presidential history wing of the National Archives. And I hope that President elect Tinubu and those after him will build on this tradition. I would like to now express my deepest gratitude to the Nigerian people for their unwavering support and trust throughout my tenure as president. It has been, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve this great nation. And I am confident that Nigeria is in capable hands as we embark on this new chapter. I have run a good race. I have finished my course. It is now... <laughs> it is now time for Anaya to take up the button. <laughs> Once again, I congratulate President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Vice President-elect Kashim Shatima on their well-deserved investiture. May the Almighty bless you and guide you in your endeavors to lead Nigeria towards a brighter and more prosperous future. Thank you. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Please get seated. Get seated. Those that need to join Mr. President for the photograph, it's on the program and the names I mentioned earlier. Senator Abdullah Adamu, APC, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, Chief of Staff to the President, of course, First Lady, the wife of our outgoing President. <laughs> Chief B.C. Akonde, Chief Shegun Oshoba. Our president said something very, very germane. He has done the race. He fought the fight. And he fought the fight still standing, alive and well. We thank God for sparing his life and that of his wife till today. The same for our outgoing vice president and his wife. This can only be God. God that has spared you till today will spare our incoming president and his wife as well. The same with our incoming vice president and his wife. Because we know God loves Nigeria. Yes, I want us to stand sideways. I can see my people adjusting. Our eminent people there. Let's stand sideways so that the camera will not cut you off. That is a strategy. Sideways, you are so sure that you will be captured. I can see our Vice President, Yami Oshibajo, doing so well with that. Our First Lady, even our incoming First Lady. <laughs> It's been a beautiful day. Now the national anthem, we're calling it a close.
party cheers to our incoming president. Hip hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip hip! Hooray! Hip 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 hip! Hooray! God bless you all. How about this? A superhero? And then no. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly 